Hi guys, here is an extra video on finding exact values of trig functions using the hand trick, just in case you need some more practice with it. So let's refresh on the hand trick. So to find um, particular values of trig functions, exact values of trig functions, you can use the hand trick. So here's a beautiful drawing of the left hand. Now on your left hand, each finger is going to represent an angle measurement. So your pinky is zero degrees or zero radians. Uh, your ring finger is 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians. Your, 40, your middle finger is 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians. And your index finger is 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians. And then finally your thumb is 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. Now when you're using the hand trick, what you're doing is you're putting that particular finger down for the angle. So for example, if I'm looking at 30 degrees, I'm going to go ahead and put this finger down so you don't have this finger anymore because right now it's down. And then your cosine is your x-coordinate and your x-coordinate would be the square root of 3, because you have 1, 2, 3 fingers, over 2, that's why you have this 2 in the palm of your hand, and then your y coordinate is the square root of 1, because you have one finger left um, once you put your, or your ring finger down, so that's square root of 1 over 2, which is just 1 half. So at 30 degrees, your coordinate is root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. So whatever the angle is, you're going to put that particular finger down, and then it's the square root of your fingers over 2. And then that finger that's being put down is kind of like a separation of your cosine and your sine, your x-coordinate and your y-coordinate. So I'm get rid of all of this. There we go. Okay. So when you're trying to find exact values of trig functions using the hand trick, the first thing you need to do is sketch the angle. Step number two is to find the reference angle. Step number three is to determine the appropriate sign based on the quadrant that you're in. Step four is to use the hand trick to find the ordered pair. And step five is to find the exact value. So let's actually work through a problem. So I have sine of negative 11 pi over 6. So negative angle measurements, you want to find a positive coterminal angle first. So I'm going to take negative 11 pi over 6 and add 2 pi to it, because that's how you find a coterminal angle. And that gives me uh, pi over 6. So what I'm looking at is sine of pi over 6. Now pi over 6, I'm going to draw my reference angle. Pi over 6 is in the first quadrant. So that means my reference angle is also pi over 6. So now I'm going to go to my hand and use the hand trick. So pi over 6 is the same thing as your ring finger. So I'm going to put down my ring finger. My ordered pair using the hand trick is root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. And since my angle is in the first quadrant, those signs are going to stay the same um, since my first quadrant is positive positive. Sine is my y-coordinate, and my y-coordinate is negative one-half. So that means your answer for this, I, I didn't mean to say negative, your y-coordinate is positive one-half. I don't know why I said negative. Um, your y-coordinate is positive one-half, so your answer for this is positive one-half. So the exact value of sine of pi over 6 is one-half. Now, if you wanted to check this in the calculator, you can. You can, um, your angle measurement is in radians, so just make sure your calculator is in radian mode. And you can type in either sine of 11 pi, negative 11 pi over 6, or you can type in sine of pi over 6, and then both of them are going to give you that one half for the exact answer. All right, let's do some other problems. So sine of 225 degrees. First, we have to find our reference angle. So 225 degrees is in the third quadrant. Here's my reference angle. 
Now your 225 went 180 and then some extra. That extra piece is your reference angle. So I'm going to take 225 minus 180 and my reference angle is 45 degrees. Now I'm going to use my hand trick. So my hand trick, I'm going to put down my middle finger because that corresponds to 45 degrees and write down the ordered pair. So my ordered pair is root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. Now if I look at the quadrant that I'm in, I am in the third quadrant, which makes both my x and my y negative. So I'm going to physically change my coordinates so that my x and my y is negative. And then... For my final answer, sine is my y-coordinate. My y-coordinate is negative root 2 over 2, so sine of 225 is negative root 2 over 2. Now if I wanted to check that in the calculator, I can hit change the mode, because the last one was in radians, this is in degrees. I can hit sine of 225, and it gives me negative 0.707. Well, your decimal is not an exact answer, so do not write down the decimal. But what you can do is you can check that negative root 2 over 2 is equal to negative 0.707, which it is. All right, tangent of 60. 60 degrees is in my first quadrant. So that means 60 degrees is also my reference angle. So your reference angle is always what you're using for the hand trick. So 60 degrees is equivalent to your index finger. So I'm going to put down my index finger. And my x coordinate is 1 half. Y coordinate is root 3 over 2. Since I'm in that first quadrant, my x and y's are both positive, so I'm going to leave it as a positive. Now tangent is y over x. Or, yeah, tangent is y over x. So that is root 3 over 2 over 1 half. Denominators are the same, so they cancel. So that means tangent of 60 degrees is root 3. Exact answer. If I were to plug that into the calculator, tangent of 60 degrees gives me 1.732. And then I can just double check that the square root of 3 is equal to 1.732, which it is. But again, don't write down the decimal because I want the exact answer, which is the radicals. All right, cosine of 5 pi over 6. So this is in radians. So in radians, you have 0 pi's over here. 5 pi over 6 is closer to pi than it is to 0. So your angle is in the second quadrant. So here's your angle, and this little wedge is your reference angle. Now I need to figure out how much further I need to go to get to pi. So I'm going to take pi. So 1 minus 5 sixths gives me 1 sixth. So my reference angle is pi over 6. Now that I know my reference angle, I can use my hand trick. I'm going to go ahead and put down my, in, uh, my ring finger. And my ordered pair is root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Now if you look at the quadrant you're in, you're in the second quadrant, which means my x is negative and my y is positive. So I need to adjust the points accordingly. And cosine is your x-coordinate, so that means cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. I'm going to check that. I'm going to change the mode on my calculator. I'm going to type in cosine of 5 pi over 6, which gives me negative 0.866. So let me double check that the negative square root of 3 divided by 2 is negative 0.866, which it is. All right, tangent of negative 30, I'm going to find a positive coterminal angle first. So negative 330 plus 360 is 30 degrees. Finding my reference angle, 30 degrees is in my first quadrant, so your reference angle is 30 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and put down my ring finger, because that's equivalent to 30 degrees. And my ordered pair is root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Tangent is y divided by x, 
So my y coordinate is 1 half. My x coordinate is root 3 over 2. Denominators are the same, so they cancel. So that leaves me with 1 over root 3, which is root 3 over 3. I can plug that into my calculator just to double check. So tangent of negative 330, I'm going to type in the original. That gives me 0.577. I'm going to double check that root 3 over 3 is 0.577, which it is. All right, more practice, cotangent. So negative 7 pi over 4, let's change that to a positive coterminal angle. So I'm going to take negative 7 fourths plus 2, because I'm adding 2 pi to it. That gives me pi over 4. So the angle measurement that I'm looking at is pi over 4, which is in the first quadrant. So your reference angle is also pi over 4. Pi over 4 is your middle finger, so I can put down my middle finger. My ordered pair is root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent is y over x, which makes cotangent x over y. So I have root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, which equals 1. Now, if you're going to plug this into the calculator to double check it, make sure your calculator is in radian mode. And then cotangent doesn't actually have a button, but you can do 1 divided by tangent of negative 7 pi divided by 4, which gives you 1. All right, 2 pi over 3. So here's 0 and pi. Uh, 2 pi over 3 is 2 thirds pi. That's closer to pi than it is to 0. So that puts us in the second quadrant. So there's 2 pi over 3. Here's my reference angle. I need to figure out what this wedge is. So how much further do I need? Um, to get to pi. So I'm going to take pi minus uh, 2 pi over 3. So 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third. So that's pi over 3. So my reference angle is pi over 3. Pi over 3 is your index finger, so I can put that finger down. And my x coordinate is 1 half. Y coordinate is root 3 over 2. Now pay attention to your quadrant because you are in the second quadrant and in the second quadrant your x is negative and y is positive. Um, cosecant matches up with sine. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine and sine is your y coordinate. So my y coordinate is root 3 over 2. So if I take that and do the reciprocal that's 2 over root 3 which is 2 root 3 over 3. All right, two more. A secant of 400 and, or 945 degrees. Well, 945 degrees is several rotations around the unit circle, so let's find a positive coterminal angle. So I can take 945 minus 360. That's 585 minus another 360 which is 225. So 225 degrees is in the third quadrant. So I need to find my reference angle. Here's my reference angle. So I need to figure out how far past 180 degrees I need to go to get the measure of this wedge. So my reference angle would be 225 minus 180, which is 45 degrees. All right, 45 degrees is your middle finger, so I'm going to put that down, and my ordered pair is root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. I am in my third quadrant, which makes both my x and my y negative. Secant matches up with cosine. Cosine is my x-coordinate. So I'm going to take my x-coordinate and flip it over since I'm finding secant. So that's negative 2 over root 2 which we have to change. So that's negative 2 root 2 over 2, which is negative root 2. And if you plug that into the calculator, double check your mode, you're constantly switching back between radians and degrees for this particular unit. 
Um, but secant doesn't actually have a button, but cosine does. So I'm going to take 1 divided by cosine of, let's go with 945. And that's negative 1.414. Let's double check that the negative square root of 2 is negative 1.414, which it is. And last but not least, negative pi. Let's go ahead and find a positive coterminal angle. So I'm going to add 2 pi to negative pi. So I'm going to take negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. So now I'm looking at cotangent of pi. Well, where's pi? Here's pi. This one doesn't actually have a reference angle. Okay, so let's work with this. So if I'm at negative pi, or just pi, because that's my positive angle. Let's figure out where this point is. So this point, if it were on the unit circle, is negative 1, comma, 0. Okay, um, so there's my ordered pair. I'm not actually going to use my hand trick for this. I'm just thinking back at that unit circle. And my ordered pair at pi is negative 1, comma, 0, since you're on that negative x-axis. So cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent is y over x, which makes cotangent x over y. So my x-coordinate is negative 1 over 0, which is undefined. Now, if I wanted to put this in the calculator, switching modes again, cotangent doesn't have a button, but tangent does. So I'm going to take 1 divided by tangent of negative pi calculator gives you an error because you can't divide by zero, so that's undefined. All right, I hope this video helped you understand finding exact values of trig functions a little bit better. I would highly recommend that you practice this with the hand trick.